Give it up for Joe Rodriguez. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. Yeah. I'm so glad to be here at the famous comedy store in Hollywood. I love it here. This is my third time here. Yeah. I performed at the main stage last time, and now I'm here, so I love it here. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, by day, I'm a private investigator. And thank you. And by by night, I, I go to therapy. That's where I'm at right now. Uh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> you know, I want to give you guys a warning about the internet. On the internet, there's a lot of scams. A lot of people trying to take your money. They pretend they're you. They contact your friends, and it's like, hey, you know, we need some money for a project or something. Don't believe any of that, right? Got to be careful with the internet. Uh, I keep on getting those uh, demands for money constantly. Money here, money. There. Give me money for this. Give me money for that all the time. And that's just my daughter. Now, can, you imagine, can you imagine if she was cloned? That would be terrible, right? Well, sure enough, she got cloned. Now I'm a grandpa. Uh, Any grandparents here in the audience? I'm the only grandparent in the freaking audience. Really? I'm the oldest guy in the whole audience. Yes. yes. No grandkids? OK, that's cool. Grandkids have oh, one over there. Great. Congratulations. They're great. Grandchildren are great. I only have one. But it's just an additional pair of hands. Money, money, we want money, 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 money. Oh, my god. There's only one of me, right? It doesn't grow on trees. So uh, what happened was with my grandchild, I, I love him to death. He's a great kid, and um, we have a lot of fun together. And he, you know, I make little faces for him. I, you know, I go like this. <laughs> he likes it. I mean, it, it's not funny. Then I go like this. <laughs> but, uh, he likes it too. But now he's older now. I can't do that anymore with him. He's older, right? So. He's older, and I can't get away with that shit. Now I'm gonna come up with better stuff. So I teach him bad words. <laughs> not bad words, I'm a Christian, so I don't teach him bad, bad words. What happens is I have an accent, and his mom says, hey, it's not Chevy, it's Chevy, I don't get it. I still don't get it. So he's growing up with an accent, who cares, right? Um, when he was even younger, I had this little bubble thing, you know, that makes little bubbles, and I couldn't work it properly, and the bubbles wouldn't come up. And he's, he's always looked up to me. And he thinks I can do everything. He thinks I can walk on water. He thinks I can step on a swimming pool and just walk on water. So uh, he asks a lot of questions, and I answer them like this. Most of the time, I'm making them up. So, so he's, uh, he thinks I just I can I can fix anything. His little car breaks, I fix it. All that stuff, right? So then um, one day, he's a little bit older. His mom makes the terrible mistake of going to the market and buying him the freaking Rubik's cube piece of crap that I can't stand. So he comes home. And he's got the Rubik's Cube all mixed up with different colors and everything. And I'm like, oh my god, I don't know what to do, right? He wants me to fix it, to put it back together again. I have no idea how to do that. And in all of his seven and a half years, I've never told him no. I've always told him, yeah, I can fix it for you, no problem, because it was things that I could fix, right? But a Rubik's Cube, I couldn't do it. So I finally had to tell him no. And it's making me cry right now, because you know, for the first time, he heard the word no from me that I couldn't do it. It's really sad. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it is sad. So he went home with his mom, and I stayed in my bed alone, of course, Christian. And I'm, I'm asleep, and I'm dreaming, right? I'm dreaming. I'm dreaming that I'm a big, fat Mexican fairy. And, and I'm, I'm blowing balloons. I'm those, those, you know, that I'm able to blow those bubbles, you know? You know, those bubbles? Are you familiar with those? Are you guys familiar with those bubbles? Yeah. You're not? Okay, let me show you. Yeah. No, yeah. No, no. So in my dream, well, I, first of all, I had to travel far east, far, far east, all the way to East LA, you know, by Colorado, you know, you know by the cemetery. And I, I found uh, this old, old Mexican Chinese man who taught me how to uh, become more wiser and how to do these things. So I'm dreaming, right? I'm redeeming myself in my dream, and I felt bad with, with what happened earlier. So I'm able to blow these bubbles just like this. <laughs> well, out of problem and I'm able to catch one like this, just like that. Okay? Yeah. So I've got this bubble like this, and I'm like, wow. Now what am I gonna do, right? So I'm thinking, hmm, in my dream. And the bubbles, bubbles flying like this, it's moving all over the place like this, and I'm thinking, maybe if I had, in my dream I had powers, I could do, you know, the Mexican Iron Man like this. Thank you. Right. You like that? Close your mouth, sir. Close your mouth. So I was able to do that. I could put it over here. 
You get that? Yeah? Is it good? Is it good? Does it look good? See? All of that. So then I was tossing and turning all day long. All, all night long, I was tossing and turning, you know? But I wasn't going to let go of this. Because I wanted to hold on to it until I woke up in the morning and realized that, wow, I can make things happen, right? But in reality, it was all a dream. It was all gone. I don't know where it went. <laughs> so then, close your mouth. So then in, uh, in my dream, I was able to, um, when my kid wanted me to fix that Rubik tube for him, I told him that I was going to go to the store real quick and I was going to come back. So when I went to the store, I went to the library and I got this book. It says, how to solve the Rubik's Cube. This is all in my dream, of course. I wasn't able to do it in real life. And I opened it up, it turns out to be in Chinese, it's got all these, uh, you know, things you can read here, and, you know, how to move the Rubik's Cube this way and that way or whatever. But in my dream, I was able to read it, even though it was in Chinese, and I was able to produce Rubik's Cubes right out of the book, just like this. Wow. Thank you. My, my translator was impressed, and then another one. Wow, he's like, damn, Grandpa. You're a genius. I said, kid, you have no idea. Another one. Wow. You know? And of course, just for fun, another one, right? It's all good. It's all good. So he's all happy. So then he asked me, hey, Grandpa, can you tell me about girls? I want to learn about girls. I said, look, all you have to do is this. When you meet a beautiful lady, come up to her and present her with a rose, right? Just like this. Just present her with a rose. That's all. He says, Grandpa, everybody does that. They've been doing that for ages. Even before I was born, before you were born. I said, I know, but they haven't done this. Look. He goes, what? I go, look. You smell it? And he say, I'm going to make another one for you, right? It's all good, right? Hello. You smell it? Make another one. Just like this. It's all good, right? So my grandchild goes, Grandpa, that's amazing. You're a genius. I told him, you have no idea. That's it. Thank you very much. Joe Rodriguez. Man, his grandson is very lucky. His grandpa makes Rubik's Cube disappear from thin air.